Hello, welcome everyone. Uh, Buzz Rush, do you want to come over here? <laughs> um, my name is uh, Andrew Mackay. Um, you can't identify me. I don't have a lanyard. They ran out of them. Um, I'm advanced teacher for ICT and computing at Ealing Hammersmith and West London College Hammersmith site. There are four sites. Um, the theme of this 20-minute uh, section is teaching and marking using Google Drive. Um, I assume a lot of other teachers and uh, managers and things like that do use Google Drive for their marking. Um, I'm sure a good healthy number of them do it better than the way I've done it. What you're about to see is the way I actually set things up with Google Drive, uh, how I teach a little bit, but mostly about how I mark. Um, hopefully, um, you'll get some ideas from this and nick them and start doing them. Or maybe afterwards, come and speak to me. I'm not hard to miss. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, we can share ideas and see if we can move forward with this thing. Uh, I have, in fact, brought with me uh, two of my uh, students currently on a BTEC Level 3 Diploma Year 2. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Bartosz and Stephen. Uh, Stephen is a uh, Year 2 uh, Level 3 Diploma. I teach him for Unit 8 e-commerce, which is uh, pretty cool considering this stuff. So Stephen will be demonstrating live um, his work, which you can kind of already see. So uh, we'll look at that in a minute. And uh, Bartosz, uh, totally something completely different. Uh, with e-commerce, they mostly produce um, written documents, theory, graphs, uh, tables, the occasional podcast, that sort of thing. We're only halfway through the year, so obviously his Unit 8 folder for e-commerce isn't quite as full as it might be towards the end of the year. Bartosz, um, Bartosz uh, what do I teach you on year two mainly? Computer design. Computer design? Yeah. Okay, so um, there's two units. There's a theoretical kind of unit about pitching ideas, and then there's unit 22 where you make a little video game in Flash. Some of the other teachers who haven't migrated to Google Drive yet have said, Andrew, this is all fine. You teach mostly theory stuff. Um, which makes sense with a Google Doc where you write things and that's that. Uh, and I say, yeah, that's true. And they go, well, what do you do with the technical stuff? For example, if you're making a little video game, an uncomplicated, easy to access video game, how do you do that in Google Drive? I can see one or two of you are already ahead of me. I don't use Google Drive for that. I use Adobe Flash, I use ActionScript 3. Uh, for this uh, particular game that they're making now. But what I found was actually in that unit, there's going to be things about backing up, backing up your work. These are IT students. The students in hair and beauty don't need to back up electronic work quite as much as our computing students. So backups, we already know how good Google is about backing up. You're never going to lose the work. Even if you consciously delete it, you can still get it back. You try and lose your work, you'll never lose it. So that's good. They don't even need to prove anything there. Two, versioning. I've made a plan for my game, P3, my game plan. It's got all my objects and my classes. It's got all this kind of thing going on. And here's version one of it. And here's version two and three and four. If we time travel back to 2002, that would have been evidenced by an email that was sent on October the 24th at 2.30 p.m. The external verifier comes in and says, oh, right, yeah, they did do their draft on time. Fast forward 12 years, 2014. All the restore points are in Google Drive. It's already there. As you'll see in a minute, we'll see how this works. We're going to move over now to Stephen's Unit 8 folder. This is real. He has logged in via the student portal, and he's now in his Google Drive. And you can see here he's shared his contents of his Unit 8 folder with me, with his program manager and my manager, and someone else beginning with S. That's you, isn't it? Yeah. Stephen? Yeah. Yeah, good. Right, so it's shared with a few people. And also, before we even look over there, we can see that he loves Google Drive so much 
that he's put a few things in there, including his contents of his USB. At Ealing, Hammersmith and West London College, when you uh, become a student or if you're lucky enough to get a job teaching and become staff, uh, you are given a G-Space account with 30 gigabytes there. So plenty of, plenty of space to store a year's worth of work at the very least. Stephen's used 0.04 of it so far halfway through the year. If this trend continues, at the end of the year, it'll be 0.8. So, Stephen, yeah. this is what you've done so far. Yep. We've only managed to look and do assignment one. You can see all the criteria on a BTEC course, P3, M1, M2, D1, P2, and P1. So here's how we do it. Yep. Uh, obviously, I set up the folder. That's very important. Last year, I didn't do that. I got the students to set up their folder. They owned it and gave permission for me to go in it. And this year, I thought, well, that actually, I've just said that. That doesn't sound right, that they've set it up and giving me permission? No, this year, I've set up that folder and shared it with him. I'm the owner. I can assign edit permissions, viewing comment permissions, and stuff like that. So for Stephen and everyone else in his group, and indeed for Bartosz and everyone in his group, I've set up their folders. And you'll see what that looks like in a moment. So yep. on to the marking. Click on assignment 1P1. Let's keep it simple. Created on the 18th of December. Or sorry, last modified on the 18th of December. Yeah. So this will load, <laughs> I hope. Uh, while this is loading, while this yep. is loading, oh, sorry. <laughs> so you can see here, this is a written piece of work. Stephen, what was P1 mainly about? Uh, P1 was mainly about talking about the different, uh, the different tools that uh, e-commerce would use. That's right. E-commerce, in order yes. to migrate from brick, a shop, to click online, you would need to describe and demonstrate an awareness of the tools that you may need in order to uh, be successful at that. And you can see here, he's talking about web servers, network cards, and so on, and so on, and so on. Stephen, can you scroll over to the right to reveal what's written on the side? Yep. There we go. Now, this is me, Andrew Mackay. At 10 to 8 in the evening, one week before Christmas, <laughs> I, uh, Butters, do you mind just standing just back a little bit so people can thank you. P1 Met, I've made that in bold. If my manager, if Stephen, if yep. me revisiting the work or an EV, an external verifier, comes and says, well, hold, hold on a minute, how do we know P1 was met? Well, what I do is I do P1 minute. Now, when you write in the comment section, there is no bold. But as Stephen can demonstrate now, can you click on the comment, Stephen? Yep, yep. All right, a little yep. trick, you may not know this. Can you click in reply to this comment? Yep and write, thank you. Oop. That's uh, T-H-A. Sorry. Sorry about that. We have to embed language and literacy, so yeah. bear with me. <laughs> Th thank you. Now, can, wait, don't, don't press reply. Can you put an asterisk, shift eight, either side of you? Because that stuff up there won't work. That's, a, that's, a, that's not an asterisk. Like shift and eight, the little starry one. Oh, yeah, so. Good, and one just before the Y. Okay, press reply. Doing the asterisk will give you a bold word. So, that's a visual representation for me. Uh, can you scroll down uh, with the. Yeah, thank you. Uh, scroll down. You should see more comments appear. Uh. Right, there aren't any. Um, we'll scroll back up. I think I know what's happened here. <laughs> OK, now, <coughs> Stephen. Yes. Uh, can you click on all changes saved in Drive for me? Thank you very much, sir. 
Pizza Hut keeps sending me texts, by the way. You do. Okay, good. Uh, ah, right, now, <clears throat> um, this is all the revisions Stephen has made for this particular piece of work. So if we scroll down, just scroll down on that little uh, tab. Well, uh, there we go, and more. Right, so 11th of October, he started his work. Uh, 15th of October, a couple of times he went in there to do who knows what. Uh, scroll up about halfway. Yeah, about there, fine, right. Um, okay, uh, about four, can you just click on 14th of November? <coughs> okay, now if we scroll down the work, some of that text will be in color. That will tell us what has been added since that date currently. So if we scroll down, not a hell of a lot. All right, back up. Okay, so you added that to that revision since there. there. So there you go. There's all your, what's the word? There's all your revisions. There's all your versions, version one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, like that. Like that. We could click on one of them, any one you like. You've already done it. Yeah. Okay, and restore the revision. That will turn it back to the way it was on the 14th of November. Um, I can imagine some of you might go, oh, that's a good idea, bang, and then deeply regret it. Um, you could do control Z, it would undo it, but we're not gonna do that. But don't forget, the latest one we had before we did restore this revision exists. It's the second from the top, so you can go back and change it. So you never lose anything again. From a teaching point of view, what this tells me, and indeed a manager, and indeed an external manager, is that it shows me when he went in and how long he took to do something. It tells me a little bit more about the student. He seems to like doing his work in the afternoon. You know, so there's other stuff if you read into it a little bit. Okay, so uh, we'll close the revision history. And now we'll go to the comments section. Click on comments up here. Okay. Sorry. Right, X, X, no, X, yeah, comments, the big one up here. Okay, now scroll down uh, uh, on the comments box, if there is one. Uh, yeah, I've got comments first. I can't uh, can you scroll down anymore? No, it can't. Okay. Scroll down, well, as it happens, Stephen's work is so awesome uh, <laughs> that we don't need any comments. His draft was bang on perfect, and I probably told him verbally. Yeah. Okay, can you close that yeah. and scroll right to the top of the P1 document? This is a... Uh, um, Phone. Do you want me to close this? What, yeah. Do you want me to close the what, entire uh, document? Uh, uh, just uh, up and then over to the left. I want to see the top bit. Thank you. Right. This is a um, MP3 playing device that, that just so happens to make phone calls. Uh. Right. This is uh, an app on the phone. I don't know if you've got this, but with a 4G connection, which I do have, I've got Google Drive there, which I've just uh, pressed. <coughs> Uh, now, you've seen the contents of Stephen's uh, folder, and this is the contents of my drive here. Now, I um, uh, forgive me, you're not going to see this on the big screen, but it's kind of the point. Um, I'm gonna, I've got a whole folder dedicated to all the groups I teach on BTEC in here. Uh, Stephen is a part of Unit 8. Stephen, what's your surname? Is it Tiller? Yeah. With T, yeah. right, okay, so all the way down the bottom, Tiller, Stephen, <coughs> and there's his work, live, uh, as you saw it there. Uh, right, uh, can you click on P1 again? Sorry, sorry. Thank you. Okay, um, now, um, I'm not on the Wi-Fi, by the way, the Wi-Fi here, uh, I haven't hopped onto it, I'm on 4G. Uh, can you just confirm I am in fact on 4G for the rest of the people? Thank you, right, okay. Okay, assignment 1P1, here we go. Um, uh, no. Technical. Okay, well we, we know it takes yeah. time to... Uh, my one loaded quicker than his one and he's hardwired in. <laughs> I'm on 4G, he's... Whatever, right, okay. So, I am in his document. Hey, how's it going?
I'll just wait for that to uh, update. Okay, one more time. Are you in the right document? Are you in P1? Yeah. Okay. I think your laptop is taking time to update there, my friend. Yeah. I'm going to try that again. Yep. Uh, there we go. Yep, there right. we go. Okay, uh, Stephen, come and stand with me here in case people think there's people mucking around here. Okay, so I'm scrolling down. Now let's say I go to that beginning bit, Unit 8 e-commerce. Let's say, for example, it had been incorrectly named. It wasn't e-commerce. So we go... Uh, there we go. The point of this in the uh, closing part of my speech is that my um, materials, my scheme of work is in fact linked yes. here as well. Um, I have access uh, to their work at all times. Obviously, in conformity to the Data Protection Act, uh, we have to uh, password protect stuff as well in case the phone goes missing. However, um, the main reason, one of the main reasons I do this is so that if I'm on the bus or the train on the way to work, 7.30 in the morning, whatever, I can quickly go into someone's work and see if they did what I asked them to do last night. Sometimes what I do is, if someone comes in late or turns in work late, I will say to them, right, I'll meet you in your P1 document tonight at 9 p.m. And it does happen. Yeah. Occasionally, I'm at a loose end, I'll go in at 10 p.m. one random night, and I'll sit back and watch a student produce work. But one of the main things uh, that's pretty good about having it on the phone is if I'm walking down the corridor and a student walks past who I haven't seen for a while or whose work I suspect is incomplete, and I say, ah, uh, oh, Bartosz, have you done your work? And of course, as a student, Bartosz will say, yeah. yes. And I'll go, are you sure? And he'll say, yeah and then hopefully I'll go away. But instead of going away, I go on here, I go in this folder, and I can see he hasn't done it. Uh, or has done it sometimes, in some cases. So I can quickly use my phone and just update it. Say again? I, I can quickly use my phone and update it if I didn't do my work, so yeah, I exactly. can cheat on you. Yeah, yeah. If you see me down the corridor, you yeah. really go in there and then update the work. And Well, yeah, if you okay, can do so it that yeah. fast, yeah. then you, know, you shouldn't be in college. You should be making money speed writing or something. So um, anyway, broadly speaking, that's our time up. Um, that's what I do. I don't know if it's what you do. I, maybe you can take some ideas there, but it definitely is worth getting that 4G connection. It's definitely worth setting up the folders, and it's definitely worth it. it there's so many reasons to do it, and I can't think of one reason not to. And that's it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.